everyone! I thought it would be fun today to film a travel video. If you haven't seen any of my videos before, I previously did a what's in my travel makeup bag video. I also did a what's in my carry-on slash carry-on only where I showed you all the things that I took on a trip and on that trip I only carried on, I didn't check any luggage to the airline. If you have flown in the US, you know that the airlines are sticklers for limiting the amounts of liquid you can carry on to a flight. So if you like taking a lot of products like I do, it can be a little limiting, however you can use some tips and tricks to kind of limit your liquids even more and it'll be much easier for you when you fly. My first tip is to take as many samples as possible. This is not a problem for me. I love sampling new products, but if you kind of have a routine and you stick to the same products, that's okay. You can always go to a makeup counter or wherever you get your products and ask for some smaller samples. So kind of think out of the box, not just perfume samples, although I always like to take several perfume samples. Here are just a couple. Here's the clean skin. Uh, perfume, here's a Versace perfume. I mean, there's so many perfumes, they're constantly giving them out, so it's really easy to use perfume samples. Another type of sample that I like to use are, I like to use mascara samples, and these are generally pretty easy to find at Ulta or Sephora or general beauty stores as well. Other types of samples I like to use, you wanna think outside the box, you wanna try to get as many samples as possible. I like to use foundation samples. Here's a foundation from NARS that I'm gonna try out on my next trip. I also like to take samples for skincare treatment. So here's a mask sample for a face mask. Here's also a um, hydration sample for some sort of moisturizer for your skin. I'm gonna try that out as well. You can also even take samples like tanning samples. So here's a tantalizer body bronzer sample. Here is a hair care sample, so a little tiny hair care sample from Dry Bar. And then, most recently, I found a travel like makeup wipe remover sample. I was really excited to see this. I haven't seen a lot of travel makeup uh, remover wipes, however, I did see this, so I'm gonna keep my eye out for more. So my second tip most people probably already know about, and that is to take a travel size container instead of the full size. So this is a travel size conditioner, and I also have a travel size dry shampoo. These are just much better when traveling, and you can even clean out containers for from other products and reuse them for traveling. So for example, here is a sample container that I got with a free sample from Lush and I just cleaned it out and reuse it for other products. Here's another makeup container that I you know, used up the makeup product and decided to go ahead and reuse this to travel with. And here is another Lush container that I put travel items, travel products in here as well. My third tip is to use solid products instead of liquid products whenever possible. So I always like to travel with a dry shampoo. I love Lush Cosmetics because they have a lot of solid products that you can replace your liquid products with. So Lush shampoo bars are great. You can get them from other companies too. That's just the company that I happen to prefer. You also should always go ahead and travel with an actual bar of soap instead of shower gel. I know shower gel is a lot more popular, but it's just so much easier to travel with soap and a solid shampoo. Another thing that you can do is travel with a massage bar or with coconut oil and use that as moisturizer instead of packing an actual liquid moisturizer. Those are kind of a little easier to travel with. And I wouldn't take this whole massage bar or this whole bar of soap or this whole bar of shampoo, I would take a smaller sample of it because you do want to save as much room as possible, but you don't have to worry about, okay, is this three ounces or less because they don't check solids, at least not in the US. So you can easily, easily travel with more product by using solid product. Another product that's also great is you can replace your dry shampoo spray with a powder shampoo, dry shampoo. And I like this particular brand just because it has a nice, easy to use applicator. It's a brush applicator and the dry shampoo just goes like right into the brush applicator and you just brush that into your hair. So I really like using dry shampoo in a powder form while I'm traveling because again, it saves on your liquids aerosols, gels, 
all of that. So that is another great tip. Use a solid whenever you can replace it, replace your liquid. A great product that I like to take with me when I travel is coconut oil. Coconut oil is great because unless it's extremely, extremely hot, it stays in solid form. But you can use this stuff as moisturizer, you can use it as makeup remover, you can use it for so many reasons. You can use it as cuticle oil. I mean, it's just great stuff to travel with. So I always like to take a travel size container of coconut oil with me. My fourth tip tip is to use the right size bag. I cannot tell you how many times I see people going through airport security using a sandwich size bag instead of a quart size Ziploc bag. So here is a Ziploc quart size bag. This is the one I actually used. It came in my travel toiletries makeup bag that I bought, I think at Target, and it is carry-on travel bag approved. Uh, anyway, you can fit a lot more in this than in a sandwich size bag. So you can see the difference here in product. I mean, I have not filled both of them up to capacity for sure, but I could still get a lot more in here than I can in here. So it does make a big difference. It's almost twice as big, not quite, but it's almost twice as much liquids that you can carry on. So make sure you're taking the right size Ziploc bag, because otherwise you're just wasting all of that potential space that you could be using to fill your liquid products in. So make sure you have the right size so that you can take as many products as you want with you. So my fifth and final tip, and then I'm actually going to give you two kind of uh, fails that I've had while trying to limit my liquids, so those are kind of funny as well. But my fifth and final tip for traveling and limiting your liquids while you're traveling is to know how much you actually need. Many people take way more than they actually need to carry with them. For example, when I started taking coconut oil with me on trips, I used to use a container this big. Well, after traveling lots of times with this container and realizing that I'm like barely touching all of the product in here, I decided to downsize to a container this big. So it saves me a lot more space and that kind of adds up. You save a little here, you save a little there. You sometimes may not even need to take an entire travel bottle of conditioner. So take a smaller size container, take maybe a sample size like this big or a smaller one if necessary. If you're only gonna be there two or three days, how much are you actually gonna wash your hair? So think about that and really limit the amount of liquids that you take based on how much you're actually going to need on the trip. So in addition to all the travel successes I've had while limiting my liquids, I have had a couple of travel fails. Things that I tried thinking, oh, this would be great, it'll really limit my liquids and it'll be wonderful. And then I tried it and I was like, this is horrible. I don't care how much it saves, I'm going back to the original. So the first example I have is when I first tried Lush's Toothy Tabs. Now, this is a great idea in theory. You can take solid, toothpaste and they're just like little tiny capsules. You break them up in your mouth and you uh, brush with them and it's a great idea. You can limit the amount of toothpaste. You don't have to bring those big rolls of toothpaste anymore. And I thought, oh, this will be wonderful. Well, to me, they taste a little too much like soap and they just gross me out. I'm sure other people really like them, but for me, they were a big fat fail. So I don't travel with these anymore. I actually just kind of have them with me. I don't know why I should just purge them and get rid of them but I keep thinking, oh, maybe I like them, and then I never do. So that was my first fail. The second product that was unfortunately a fail for me, I really wanted to like it, was again a Lush product, and like I showed you throughout the video, there are a lot of Lush products that I love and swear by, but just a couple things didn't work out. When you try a lot of different things, some of them are bound to fail, but for me, I do not like the solid conditioners. I don't like them, I just don't feel like they do the job. I know that other people absolutely love them, but for me, they're just not quite what I need as far as my conditioner goes. So that is one place that I will splurge and save some room to take some liquids with me is with my conditioner. So you just gotta try things out. Some things that I like, you might hate. Other things you like I might not work for me. So you just wanna try and see what fits best with you. Well, that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed these travel tips. If you have any travel tips that I didn't mention with limiting your liquids or just travel tips in general, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you like the video, you can click the like button. Other than that, if you want to connect with me in social media, I have a blog and a Twitter account. I'll go ahead and put those below as well. And I'll link my other travel videos below as well. So if you want to see my what's in my carry-on, carry-on only, and then also my what's in my travel makeup a bag video. I'll put links to that below. Other than that, I hope you're having a really great day and I will see you next time.